What's up, y'all? I'm going to show y'all how to diagnose if your stator is bad or going bad. So you can see this is the stator off of a 1988 Force 85. And you can see from right here, it doesn't look too bad, does it? But when you get closer and examine the outside of it, you can see all this black stuff on here. You see all the black stuff oozing out of it? It's not supposed to look like that. Here's an example of the black stuff oozing out of it. And here's another part of it with no black stuff oozing out of it. You can see these parts of the coil are nice and clean. There's no black gunk oozing out. What this black stuff is, it's an insulator that insulates the inside of the coil. And what happens is, when the motor gets hot and over time, that black stuff oozes out. Now just because you have that black stuff oozing out of your stator doesn't mean it's bad, but it's definitely a sign that it's time to replace it. You can take your chances and see how long it'll last, but it's only a matter of time before it fails if the stuff's oozing out. I mean, do you really want to take a chance if you see that stuff oozing out and go out on the lake or ocean and then it fails on you? It's better just to replace it if you see it like that. Now, another thing to check is the wires coming out of it. You want to make sure they're not broken or... The insulation isn't cracking on them or something I've noticed is if you just feel them like this one right here it feels really rubbery and it almost feels like there isn't wire inside of it it's really weird but it feels like really rubbery like there's almost no wire inside of it I've noticed that bad ignition components tend to feel like that, the wires on them. You can see this one is a lot stiffer. This one is just like, it's almost like spaghetti. I mean, there's nothing to it. That's another thing you want to check. Now, if your ends are bad, that's no big deal. You can just replace those if they're damaged. Now these stators are comprised of two different sets of coils. There's the charging coil, and then there's the ignition coil side. Now your ignition coil might still be good, and your charging coil could fail, and then your battery wouldn't charge, but your ignition would still run properly. Now they can also fail on the reverse of that. Your ignition coil could fail and your spark will be all messed up. And then your charging coil might still work. And your battery will stay charged. But your ignition will be all messed up. Like misfires or no spark at all. You can test these things with a multimeter real quick and easy to see if it's failed. You're going to have to check online to see what wires go where. Now in this stator... The green and yellow wires are the wires that go to the rectifier. And I know that because they have the ring terminals on them. It's not always like that for all outboards, but on this one it is. Now all stators generate AC voltage. So on any outboard, it's AC voltage that's being generated and it has to be converted to DC voltage in order to charge your battery. Now on this stator, these yellow wires send out an AC voltage to a rectifier, and then the rectifier then converts the AC to DC to charge your battery. So we can check all these coils real quick and easy with a multimeter, referencing our chart. Alright, now you can see that we're set up to test this thing. 
This concept works the same on an outboard. I'm just doing it here on the ground so that you can see it much easier. So we have our little multimeter hooked up to these leads and we need some number to go off of to see if ours is good or not. So we gotta find a table online to see what the good values are and what the bad values are. And these are resistance values. You can see it's set to 2000 ohms. You wanna make sure that your multimeter is set to resistance. It needs to be set to an ohm setting higher than what your max is for your stator. Our max for this stator is 800 ohms. So this has gotta be at 2000 ohms in order to read from zero all the way up to 2000. If we just set it to the 200, we wouldn't be able to test it because it would only go up to 200. And we wouldn't be able to see 500 to 800 ohms what this stator is supposed to be tested at. So make sure your value is set higher than what the max good setting is for your stator that you find online. And this is our resistance of these two leads. Now these leads are connected together to the windings. I don't know if it goes this way or this way, but they're connected together. Let's imagine they go this way. So if they go this way, it goes around like this and it's wrapped all around here all around and comes back to here and then comes out here. So we need to see if that coil is good from here to here. So what we do is we hook up a multimeter and test the resistance because the wire has a resistance from here all the way around. So we hook up our positive and negative. It doesn't matter which order. You can do it this way or you can switch them. It doesn't matter for this test but we're gonna see what the resistance is. And you can see that the resistance is 707 ohms. The range for this stator is 500 to 800 ohms. So we know that this coil is good within its resistance range. Now we're gonna test the other coil, and then we're gonna test the charging coil, these two leads. So we're gonna hook these two together and test that coil, now that we know this one's good, and then we're gonna test the charging coil. So we're gonna test each part and see which one's good and which ones are bad. If any of it's bad, you gotta replace the whole thing. If only one of them's bad, you gotta replace the whole thing. If it all tests good, then it's good. But if any part of this fails, it's time to get a new stator. I mean, you can live with it not charging your battery, but eventually your battery is going to run dead and you're going to have wish that you replaced it while you had it all apart. So let's see what these read now. Now you can see that we have our two leads hooked up to our other two wires that come off the stator. And we get a one. And what this one means is that it's infinite ohms. That means... The stator is burned up somewhere along here and it can't read the ohms from end to end. So this part of the coil is bad. So we need a new stator. Now we're going to test the charging part of the stator. Now we have our leads hooked up to the charging part of the stator. And you can see that we get a reading of 1.3 ohms you might have to adjust your multimeter down to the next lowest setting in order to see what the resistance is. But we can see that we have 1.3 ohms. Now keep in mind that our leads have a certain amount of resistance without testing anything. You can see with the two leads touching each other that they have 0.8 ohms of resistance. So we might need to subtract that from what we get when they're hooked up in order to have an accurate reading. Now you can see that the multimeter is reading 0.9 ohms. And the first time we tested it, it was 1.3 ohms. That's why you have a range. I mean, it varies. It goes up and down depending on how tight your connectors are, how clean everything is. You definitely want to make sure these connectors have no corrosion on them so you get the most accurate reading, but it'll jump up and down from, you know, 1.3 to 
0.9 or whatever. You just want to get a general idea of how many ohms resistance there is between the coil wires and then compare that to a chart that you can find online or a service manual. That would be even better if you have a service manual. But this data is definitely bad and I know it's bad because I was having ignition problems with the misfire and it wouldn't charge the battery and it wouldn't run well at idle at all. So I know that I have a bad ignition part of the coil and the charging side of the coil is bad too. Regardless of what this says, I know it doesn't work. So we know this stator is bad, so it has to be replaced. So we know this thing's bad, now we gotta find a new one. Well, you can find used ones on eBay or a local salvage yard if you got one nearby. Make sure that they tell you that it's good and they give you some kind of return policy if it doesn't work. Because if you get a bad one and you're stuck with it, then it's just a waste of money. So make sure that you have like 30 days or something. Make sure it's not sold as is because if it's sold as is and you get a bad one, well, they may or may not work with you. You're stuck with it. You can also buy these things new, which would be the preferred way to go if you got the money for it. They're not cheap. They're like 200, 250 bucks new, but it's definitely the best way to go. I'll put links in the description where you can find all the diagnosis information, how to diagnose these things even further. Now there's ways that you can test them with the outboard running and get an adapter for your multimeter. It's called the DVA adapter. And that's a whole nother video in itself. But this is just a quick and dirty way how to test these things. Most of the time, this is good enough to diagnose the problem. If you really have a really bad problem that's extremely hard to diagnose, you might have to get one of those adapters and test voltages and stuff to make sure that it's running right. I'll also put links in the description where y'all can find new stators and find out exactly what part number that you need. But yeah, going new is definitely the best way to go. I mean, it's the most reliable and you don't have to worry about it. If it looks good when you're buying a used one and the guy says that it works and he gives you some kind of return policy, I mean, it's probably all right, but I prefer to get a new stator. So there you go, guys. That's how you diagnose if your stator's bad or not. A quick and easy way. Thanks for watching, y'all. Like and subscribe for more outboard videos. Later.